All right. Hello. I'm Nick Hammond, and now begins uh, Women's Month in the country and also here at 5FM. But the stance that we've chosen to take in, uh, as the station this year is, so what? Uh, and when we talk about so what, we need to be honest about why we think there have been certain failures when it comes to things like Women's Month campaigns and why they're not able to address matters that are incredibly serious and need to get fixed. In fact, they should have in most cases been fixed a long time ago. And one way in which we can start to do this is by shifting the uh, burden of responsibility. And so that's is kind of, I suppose, what we're doing now. I'm the host of the Afternoon Drive on 5FM with me, Sia, the program manager, JD, the station manager, both relatively new to 5FM, all both joining in 2020. So the first time they would have gone through a campaign like this with us. And I thought it would be a great way to kick things off by just sort of having a conversation about where everyone's at. So Sia, I see Bo, or both of you are in your homes, but Sia, uh, how's it going that side, man? What's up? It's uh, nice to see you. I don't get to do this very often. Thank you, Nick. Um, it's been, what, five months working extra hours. There's been a lot of overtime. Thank you, JD, um, that we've been um, working 12-hour days are a reality. Um, and most importantly, um, we continue um, entertaining and informing our audience. It's nice to see you too, JD. I, I know that things have been incredibly difficult and busy, but yeah, as in terms of what Sia is saying, I agree. I think we, we're, tr we're trucking on in whichever ways we can. That's exactly it. I mean, it's been such a challenging time for, for everybody really in the world. This pandemic is worldwide. Um, but, you know, we, we've been classified as essential workers from day one of the lockdown. And it's because we have such a critical and vital role in information sharing and making sure that we keep our audience motivated and positive through this really rough time. And it's been fantastic to see how the 5 of them team has come together to work to, to make sure that we keep delivering quality content to our audience to, to help them get through their days. What's been the most daunting part or challenging part for us is, you know, making sure that the environment we've created at the studio and in the building is as safe as possible Hence, you are broadcasting from home. Hence, we're working from home. But I'm very proud and honored to be part of this Five of Him team. And, and, and you guys have done a really good job so far. Yeah, the other side of uh, the new normal conversation, what I'm realizing more and more as time goes on, is that because there's a break on certain things, there is opportunity to reflect. And I think that that can be a productive thing. If we look at a brand like Five of Him, both of you guys have come into it now in 2020. Um, what, from your perspective... Uh, is happening at the brand and at the station to make sure that whether you are male or female, whatever you happen to be, that, that you would have an equal footing here, that that wouldn't be something that needs to make a difference. Exactly. Discriminating based on, on your profile, your demographics, or any one of your preferences, beliefs, values, and so forth is, is completely unacceptable. And I must say in 2020, it's, it's, it's still odd that we have to have these conversations given what our leaders have gone through specifically in, in, in our country. But the reality is, Nick, it's still there. You know, um, the injustices and inequalities are still there. Look at the GB, GBV stats that's, that's, or gender-based violence stats that's happened since lockdown. It's skyrocketed. So there's a, there's a serious, serious problem in society as a, as a whole. And, you know, that's why I believe that radio and media has such an integral and important role to play in terms of the messaging and shifting and shaping society into the society we need it to be. Specifically from a 5 FM point of view, it's, it's you know, and Sia will talk a bit about, about the, a bit about the programming lineup and how male-dominated it's been. But radio in general has been very male-dominated in general. And I understand the irony of three men talking about um, Women's Month, but that's because, uh, you know, there's a sense that men are quite um, naive and oblivious towards the sexism that occurs every single day. For example, you know, I was having conversations with our colleagues um, and, and previous colleagues who would share stories about they would be very cognizant about what they put on when they want to go to the mall. Because if a dress is too short, they're afraid that it's too easy access for rape or it might be inviting. And as a man, I can't say I've ever had to deal with something like that. I've, I've never, never worried about anything like that. So men just take these things for granted and we don't, we don't realize the everyday sexism that's occurring and all that leads to the greater problem of, of how, how 
mess how toxic masculine we are you know back in the day you always wanted a man with a with a booming voice and that's what you wanted to put on radio because it sounded nice um and these days that's that's not what it is it's, it's about the content it's about the messaging it's about what you put out in there so we're in the process of building um and nurturing talent of across the board of equal value to make sure that it's fair and we get the representation right and and it's not just because we want to play the poster game it's because we truly believe we need to fix these these inequalities what's really exciting to see and great to see about the five of them structure is this there are a lot of women behind the scenes that you don't necessarily see in front of the scene bb being one of them naturally you know um you know we've got lisa who's our marketing manager you've got lisa who's on the programming team there's a whole bunch of of women who work part of five of them actually make sure that five of them is what it is today but from a managerial point of view it's 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 awesome to see that that we have women influencing the decision making that's happening at a high level it's a long term journey but i think the most important thing is that internally we need to start as a team to acknowledge that there's a problem and once you acknowledge a problem and start having the dialogue and become more open minded to learn because we need to learn to be able to adapt and change you know um also for 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 me as a as a father to to two wonderful girls um young girls 16 and 10 years old every women's month um i i always have these conversations with myself that um i i can't really say happy women's month um uh, because you know as we all know women in south africa really don't have much to be happy about um and i'm i'm speaking from a male privilege point of view because you on 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 a, on a daily basis we we go through news headlines um news stories of how women um are, are being treated and how women are suffering in the hands of um of men it's it's about time to to jd's point that we 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 need to appreciate the space that we're in um try and um accept um the challenges that women are facing at the expense um of of us men and i th- i think as well you know see with a lot of change it it's something that requires a, like an arduous chipping away at a block once you've identified certain problems that are obvious then you go and you say okay cool here are some small steps that we can take that become bigger steps over time um and i'd wondered you know from like a programming perspective because we touched on the fact that this is something that we're interested in doing uh what some of those might look like and what some of those 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 ideas might be as an industry we we be guilty because for a lot of years women have been to a large degree treated been treated unfairly in a sense that the roles that they were expected to execute um from the radio point of view um it's just um something similar to to just a back and um i would call a helper slash tea lady um you are you are not expected to do any critical or fundamental um role within a professional space being a youth a, a youth brand speaking to the youth um speaking for the youth we then said just because someone is a woman it doesn't mean they are less of a person or less um less capable um they can they can execute it if not better than um than their male counterparts so that has been our approach um in in our programming um starting this year in 2020 nick let's look at your team for for example um or the five drive team there there's there's yourself there's jude there's nadia there's bibi now typically from a radio point of view what would happen is you would hire uh, a male anchor like i mentioned before he's got a great voice booming voice he sounds nice on air and then you would try and and dress it up with with female uh, or woman colleagues around and then they were just the news readers or traffic readers and they only had their 30 seconds of airtime here and there but i think what you would have noticed quite deliberately with five drivers no one is more important than anybody else on that show as much as you like to call yourself the anchor um that show is not that show without Nadia and Bibi they play an incredible role in contributing to the content and the holistic value of the show so what we've worked on is to change the mindset because it's an industry thing again right that you have a male who is the the face of the show the anchor of the show who show it is and we're working on beating that and saying that's not how it is it's about the the collective team if you look at the Roger Good show it's it's Roger it's Robbie but it's Anele and Shreshni and Selene and Shreshni they are 
brilliant and they're part of that show um they're the equals of roger and robbie there's there's no discrepancy you know because our focus is content and delivery of content everybody plays an equal role in that so we've we're making a, a concerted effort to change the way people perceive a radio show to be held or the team or the dynamics thereof it's about everybody there i think it goes both ways i think it's partly reinforcing society, but I also think society informs it to some extent. So I think it's, it's yes. like a continuum. Um, and I do, I do think that, that nothing that we're talking about here is a radical idea. I mean, it's essentially, essentially all, we're, all that we're saying is it's better to build a society in which who you are doesn't dictate what you can become. We've been doing this thing uh, that launches throughout the month now. It's a, it's, it's, it's a series of videos that myself and, and the other male presenters and, and sports readers and et cetera uh, are voicing, but it's the stories of females at the station. It's anonymous experiences either now or in the past or whatever and wherever. When you read these things and you go through them, there is something that kind of happens, something quite interesting where you're able to, you're able to internalize it a, a step further and you, it, 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 it becomes very deeply impactful because you're a man reading a story from a woman that that, that has never been your own story. I think it's very important um, to speak about the personal as well and to, to how, how personally, you know, you look at how you would react in situations and how you could ensure that that's a good and helpful reaction. I think if you look at it deeply, that actually exemplifies exactly what's wrong. The mere fact that a woman can't tell her story and identify herself when telling the story out of the fear of being victimized indicates just how deep this problem really is and how unfair and unjust it is. From my side, I'm trying to become less ignorant towards these, these issues. And I am very fortunate and privileged because I'm surrounded by great women who help me learn to become better and become more exposed to the real issues so I get a better understanding to, to exactly what, what, what is wrong. Ultimately, I believe as men, it's our responsibility to gain trust and to build a relationship with women. But the trust is built on um, you know, a real and authentic stance where you want to help and support women. You know, I've never had to tell someone a story where I was mistreated and had to hide my identity. I don't know what that feels like. and I can't imagine what it feels like. I think that's unbelievably cruel. For me, it's about do we create an environment at 5FM where women feel comfortable and safe? with everybody involved. And does everybody feel comfortable and safe? So like I mentioned earlier, BB and Nadia, when they sit in the studio with you and the five drive team, do they feel like they can be themselves without having to be ridiculed or criticized or victimized? But I believe the first step is to start working as men to regain the trust of women um, because we've lost it because we as a society have been uh, incredibly unfair and, and it's just really perverse at the moment the way it's going. But as leadership, we need to set the tone. And I believe a campaign like Women's Month is a great starting point. But I just want to mention, when we, when we had a discussion with, with the team around Women's Month and what we're going to do, we all said, but guys, we can't do this just for the month of August. That's, that's not right. We need to instill it as a continuous, permanent value of 5FM that Women's Month should become part of our ordinary, every single day life. And taking action will hopefully add to the contribution of, of making a positive change. I, for one, I'm not a perfect man. Um, I've, had, I've, I've, had my own, um, I've had my own challenges of toxic masculinity, but um, it, it, it's the realization of how do you respond in, in, in fixing the, mas the toxicity of masculinity, how you respond into fixing it. So it's about it's about how uh, how us as as men in these critical positions that 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 we occupy and also um, is is it's how we um, educate people it's how it's it's how we respond to such issues it it really is um, the response part of it and how you do it responsibly um, to make sure that you 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 first accept because acceptance. Acceptance is 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 um is the first step, um and, and until you've taken that step, then you will still be going back to the very same issues. 
I wanted to thank both of you for making some time to have this conversation. I'm very much, as I've said throughout this, of the belief that campaigns often miss the mark because it's meant to be loud and it's meant to be fast. And the assumption is that the results are immediate. And I think all three of us are smart enough to know that that's obviously not the case. I do think that campaigns can be helpful catalysts though. I do think that it can be a great way to begin conversation. And, and thanks, I mean, thanks to, you know, speaking honestly about these things, because I think the industry at large often sort of ignores them. And again, flashy campaigns help you to do that. It help, they help you to actually kind of, uh, get into conversations that really do matter. Um, so here's hoping that that we have not now with this month necessarily started, but that things that have been started before can be highlighted by this month and that we can continue to to live a culture that slowly changes the way that things have been for far too long. So thank you, guys. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. 5FM. Watch 5FM TV on YouTube. 5FM.